Welcome to Hypo Brew. I'm Tom Brennan. Today I've got a video for you where I've harvested yeast from a commercial beer. Uh, pretty much just to see if I was able to do it. And this is the beer that I have uh, finished with. And I will show you the process that I have to do it. And I'll show you on the other side of the ska. So what I did in this experiment was I actually took three bottles of Sierra Nevada Pale Ale and I cultured the yeast from that. You may be asking yourself, why would you want to do that from Sierra Nevada Pale Ale? Well, first off, it's 10 bucks for a six pack. I'm just kind of doing this as an experiment and it did successfully work. That's why I've got the beer to prove it. And I didn't want to try something that was easy to find. Sierra Nevada Pale Ale, you can find it pretty much anywhere by me for about 10 bucks a six pack. So I just wanted to see if I could do it. So here's the process on how I took care of it. Why, thank you, future me. This is past me. So this is what I'm doing on the day that I'm starting the yeast starter. All right, typical of a yeast starter day. Let me show you here. I've got, uh, let's see, two cups of water. I will eventually get a quarter cup of DME. Uh, there's some yeast nutrient here. I got my Erlenmeyer flask back there, my stir plate, uh, funnel. A sort of things now this is where it's going to get a little strange I have three bottles of sierra nevada pale ale um, the reason why i'm going to try to harvest this is because let's see if i can turn the light on here check this out so the inside of the pale ale here you see that the yeast on the bottom settling on the bottom there uh, my goal is to harvest that to try to see if it can make a beer out of it. And because basically the Sierra Nevada Pale Ale yeast essentially is uh, the American Ale Yeast 1. So it's WLP 001 or Y Yeast 1056. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the uh, kind of the dregs from these three bottles uh, and I'm going to put it into the yeast starter. So that's how it's gonna work. Real quick, what I wanted to mention before uh, you go any further into this video, while I was harvesting the yeast, for uh, for the starter that I made, I had three beers in about a half hour. For science, of course, okay? So just be a little gentle when you're watching it because, you know, when you have three beers in a half hour, meh, you know, judgment, speech can kind of lapse a little bit. That's all. All right, now that I've gone the uh, last bottle here, um... I figured I would get a, it's a good time to get the yeast starter going after I'm done with this. You know, the other thing too is I could wait a little while um, because I want to make sure I have the yeast uh, up to like a pitching temperature because these bottles have been in my fridge for, uh, you know, a day. Wow, that's a lot of foam. Um, they've been in my fridge for a day, so they got to get up to temperature. Now, there's not a whole lot of liquid inside of the uh the bottles now so it'll get up to temperature pretty quickly so i figure once they start this once i empty this i should say i'll start the uh the yeast starter and uh, get get to get things going so i have my uh starter wort at a boil now i'm going to set it for 10 minutes just like i normally would for a starter i actually have a video posted up uh, of the starter uh, how i make a starter that is the only thing I've done is actually changed I've boiled the starter in an Erlenmeyer flask once or twice before, and it's worked out like a champ. It's been great. One less pot to clean. While I'm at it, I also have the three uh, bottles of Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. I have my stir, uh, stir pill, if you will. I don't know the name of it off the top of my head. Uh, <laughs> in the sanitizer, and I've got my stir plate all ready to go. And the most important thing is I have my window ventilating because things can start to smell in a way that people don't particularly like in the house when I uh, use or make a yeast starter. All right, let's kill the heat. And then with a glove, see the glove? Because that Erlenmeyer flask is very hot. I'm gonna just bring it over to the uh, sink here. I have water prepared already with um, Actually, I put salt and ice in here, uh, so that'll bring the temperature down pretty quickly, and we'll go from there. 
Uh, considering how, uh, you know, I've had three beers. Uh, stir bar. That's what this is called. I'm going to go dump this real quick. I had it going into some star sand. There it is, going into the, uh, the Erlmeyer flask. I have my beer that I had going. Before, I'm just going to shake this up. Kind of get everything all mixed up inside the bottle here. And then just dump. Dump it in. As easy as that. Alright. That's one. There's the second bottle here. Now, I've actually read that you really only need two bottles for this, but I really just wanted to make sure that I had everything all, uh, you know, I'd rather have more yeast than less. The other thing was uh, the starter that I have, the starter yeast will give me an OG of about 1040. So that's what I'm hitting for here. Sometimes people go a little less and then step it up uh, to, you know, to a little bit bigger temp. But, you know, that they're really kind of only working with a very small amount of yeast. So with the three beers worth of yeast in here, I figured I should be good to go. All right. So there is three beers worth of yeast. I'm going to put my star sand on the tinfoil here. All right. And then just pop it on my stir plate and have at it. And we'll see what happens in a short period of time, right? Here we are about 24 hours out after I was pitching. You can see there was already some uh, croissant forming here. Stir plate's going. Actually, I had to move the stir plate to another spot just because it was in the kitchen, which kind of is a, kind of a nuisance being in there. But uh, yeah, so everything's going. Seems to be working just fine. Uh, fair amount of yeast there, and we'll see what happens in the day or two. All right, we are uh, two days out, and it uh, looks like there's still some active fermentation going on. You can tell there's a little bit of sediment growing on the bottom here, so we're going to keep going. Maybe in a day or two we should be good to go. Here we are four and a half, five days out, and I believe now, finally, I've hit high croissant. So I brewed and pitched on Saturday. It's now Wednesday morning, and uh, it looks like <laughs> looks like my yeast uh, culturing was a success, <clears throat> just by judging how much yeast is in there now, how much activity is going on there now. The reason why I had this in my closet and on my uh, refrigerator fermentation chamber, just the, the carboy it was the only thing I had available, and. Uh, it's just too tall for it. So, anywho, and it's it's 67, 68 degrees in here, so it's you know right about where it should be. So after all was said and done, I've got an oatmeal pale ale, uh, which pretty much is, uh, let's see, if memory serves. <laughs> By memory serves, I mean my brew sheet here. Uh, eight pounds of two row, two pounds of victory malt, a pound of caramel twenty, and a pound and a half of old fashioned oats that I actually just uh, put in the stove to kind of toast them up a little bit, and then I just hit them with a whole lot of hops, uh, the Cascade Centennial Chinook, and I have a hop spider in my kettle, so I didn't have to worry so much about the hops getting all over the place, which actually worked great because I wanted to harvest the yeast off of uh, off of the spear. It's pretty much a normal out, run-of-the-mill beer, uh, nothing too fantastic, but I was really doing this more for the experiment more than anything else. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. You can find me on Tumblr at hypobrew.tumblr.com. I'm on Twitter at hypobrew, and then you can just check out my normal domain, hypobrew.com. Till next time, guys. Cheers.